we now talk about Einstein Uhlenbeck stochastic differential equation. This is given as dx d is equal to minus theta 2 x t dt theta 3 d w t. So this is the Brownian motion part. So this process was modified by Wasicek. Wasicek put a theta 1 in front of the process. So theta 1 minus theta 2 x t dt. So this became a new process and it, this is generally written as like this dx t is equal to theta times mu minus x t dt plus sigma d w t. So again, this is our stochastic part. And this d w t is nothing but the Brownian motion. And so the variable here is taken out from a normal zero t process where t could be very small. So you could set the t in your grid. So this is the model and this model is useful for interest rates. So most banks use this model for interest rate uh, modeling. So this model has a number of components. It has three components in it which are constant. There is a theta in it. We have to talk about it. There is a mu in it and there is sigma in it. So we have to give three these initial values for the model to run and then you can solve for xt. So let us come to the nut and bolts of this model. So say you want to model interest rates. So you have some past data. So you have taken some past data of interest rates, say till time t, and now you want to simulate from time t to the future. So this is your future and this is your past data. So in the past data, you can have the past data, you can find the mean of the data. So the mean would be mu. And then you can find the variance of the data. So the variance you write as sigma square by 2 theta. So you compute the variance, you equate it equal to sigma square by 2 theta. So the long term mean is mu and speed of reversion is theta. So theta we call as speed of reversion and instantaneous velocity is sigma. Long term variance is sigma square by 2 theta. So whatever long term variance number you get, you split it into two parts. Now that is a qualitative judgment whether how much you want to put in sigma and how much you want to put in theta. Now what is sigma and theta going to do? Sigma is a part of Brownian motion. So sigma is going to increase randomness, but theta is going to increase convergence. So let us see this more carefully. So theta and sigma have opposite effects. So increase in sigma will increase the amount of randomness entering the system. But at the same time, if you increase theta, it will amount to increasing the speed at which the system will stabilize around long term mean mu. So say you have some long term mean of interest rate. So say this is the long term mean of interest rate. This is mu. So what is sigma going to do? Sigma is going to, if you start simulating, it's trying to take your interest rate in directions which are away from the mean, increase the randomness. And what is theta going to do? Theta is the part which fluctuates your interest rate around the mean. So if you increase the theta, this will uh, converge fast towards the mean. So theta is nothing but speed of convergence towards the mean. So once we put this model into the system, you can keep changing theta and sigma to see how the simulation looks like. And this stochastic differential equation is very useful for modeling future evolution of interest rates. In fact, this is a primary model which is used everywhere. So again, you need to package uh, Wima. You set the model. So again, I'm going to outline. So this is the drift of the model. And this part is the diffusion. And that's what we are going to copy. So drift is theta times mu minus x. We just copied this right here. And diffusion is just sigma. State variable is x. Time variable is t. We are going to solve for variable x. I'm setting the initial value as 0.5. You can set whatever value you want to. So we are going to simulate this model m1. m1 is the model which I have set here. Set model. So we're going to simulate this model M1, but now we have to give three parameters. We have to give theta, we have to give mu, and we have to give sigma. So I'm taking mu as 0.1, sigma as 0.2, theta as two. You can take whatever values you want to. We can just change it. And then we are just going to plot it. 
So let us now run this in R and see. So we're going to run this in R. So just select this and hit the run button and this is going to plot it. So see the way it is being, uh, it is getting plotted. So mean was 0 0.1, so it somehow comes close to 0 0.1. So you can just change, keep on changing theta and this will give you different values. And you can keep changing sigma, so let us make theta as 4 and let us plot this again. So now you can see, so every time you plot it, it's just going to give you different values. So the idea is of a Monte Carlo simulation, plotting once doesn't give you much. So you plot a thousand times and then you make a corresponding probability distribution which comes according to your value. So notice that we are always going down because uh, initial value I'm taking is 0 0.5 and mean is 0 0.1. So mean is 0 0.1, initial value is 0 0.5. So if I take initial value as 0 0.2, then things will be different. So let us take initial value as 0 0.2 and run the model. So initial value is 0 0.2 and my mean was 0 0.1. So see the process is again different. So it depends upon what your long term mean is. I'm assuming my long term mean is 0 0.1 and uh, initial value is 0 0.2. So you could say your initial value is 0 0.05 um, also. So let us take it as 0 0.05 and simulate this again so 0 0.05 and now it is kind of simulating around 0 0.1 so you can play with these values again uh, you have to do a lot of monte carlo simulations to get a decent uh, probability distribution around uh, your uh, long term mean